Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm here every Saturday and Sunday from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and I'm here primarily for you. We're talking about health, nutrition, and the way that we can reach all of our desires to be healthy and have a wonderful life filled with vitality, health, and have all the benefits of being doing what we want to do. Because we can do it. We're not sitting on the sidelines because we are filled with pain or rheumatism or arthritis or autoimmune diseases. We are taking part of life because we can. And everybody can. We can always get better every day by making better choices every day. Choices as to how you eat, the type of food you're eating, the quality of your food. Our body needs fuel, and that is in the way of vitamins and minerals and polyphenols and other accessory food factors that are found only in food. Drugs are not the answer for good health. They may save lives, but they do not promote health. And I'm sorry, because of the medical school education, doctors don't know anything about health or the nutrition that provides health. It's a sad state of affair that we can't depend on doctors to teach us because doctor means teacher. But no doctor is teaching us how to be healthy. You're on your own, folks. And that's why we are in such bad shape. Because the food companies, the drug companies, are making us sick. Sicker. And the drug companies can only sell to sick people. There's no use to sell drugs to healthy people. So they don't want to tell us how to be healthy, although they know. They're not ignorant. They just know how to make more money based on sick people. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. And not telling you that you can be healthy by just changing the food you're eating. And that's why we are here trying to get across every weekend. I wish I had a daily show. These are some of my goals. You know, I want to be a a nationwide syndicated show. I want to be on serious radio. I want to be able to get out and talk to more and more people all the time. Because it's our responsibility, you and I, it's our responsibility to be healthy. You are the only one that can make yourself healthy. And you are the only one that can make yourself unhealthy by selecting the wrong kinds of food. I would say non-nutritious food. We really are nutritionally starved. We're eating calories and junk food. Non-nutritious foods. It's crazy, folks, because we can change that around by just making changes in our lifestyle choices. Do you want to? Are you sick enough to be wanting to change your life? Or do you want to just pop a few drugs and continue on the way that you are? It's your choice. I'm just trying to tell you that you have another choice. If you want, you have the ability to choose better. And that's why we try to point out things on the show that may help you. And today, we're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog. Hmm. Well, anyway, we're going to talk about high blood pressure. What can you do about high blood pressure? One of the common causes for heart disease and death. We're going to talk about polyphenols. It's a group of compounds found in many different foods, healthy foods. We're going to talk about why your brain needs high fat, 
And then we're going to talk about a, a toxic mineral. A mineral that can damage your brain. And then we'll tell you how you can relieve carpal tunnel syndrome or carpal tunnel pain. And benefits of curcumin for overweight people. We have a lot to talk about today. So without delay, let's get going. How old are your arteries? Well, depends on how old you are, right? But you can live a life that ages your arteries older than you are. You might be 30 or 40 or 50, but you may have arteries that are so damaged, you would probably find those arteries in an 80-year-old or 90-year-old. And now we are finding that younger people today have more damage internally than older people. Recently, researchers followed three groups of teenagers. Yes, I said teenagers. Not older people, not the elderly, but teenagers for five years. Some of those teenagers were of normal weight, some were obese, and some had type 2 diabetes. This, would, this is unheard of. We would never have heard teenagers with type 2 diabetes and being obese 30 or 40 years ago. We probably started living, leaving the category of healthy living in about the 70s or 80s. Not too long ago. Now, on this study, after five years, the teenagers who were obese, diabetic, and who had high blood pressure, they had prematurely aged arteries. Their arteries were thicker, less flexible, stiffer, and clogged, plugged with plaque. Leaving these teenagers at an increased risk of heart attack or stroke. 18% of children are obese. And no one is making an effort to change that. So that's only going to grow in time that they expect everyone in America to be obese by 2050. Having high blood pressure was just as bad for the arteries as diabetes or obesity. Over 50% of all strokes are due to high blood pressure. So what should we learn and what should we know about high blood pressure? Well, blood pressure is the force of the blood against the artery walls. Think of a hose, a garden hose. A brand new hose, when the water is turned on, the pressure is turned on, water pressure, not blood pressure, water pressure, in the hose, sprinkling your garden, washing your car, you have a lot of water flowing through that diameter of the hose. Now, when that hose is treated very badly, you don't put it away for the winter. You leave it outside in all the winter weather. And then you leave it lay out in the, on the lawn or someplace during the hot heat and the sun. And then you might even drive over it on your way out the driveway. You are treating that hose very badly. And if you leave, leave it lay out in the garden with a lot of dirt, 
there possibly is some way to have more mud inside that diameter of the hose so it becomes clogged with dirt, mud, plaque. So eventually, it takes more pressure, more water pressure, a force, to have all that water leaving the diameter of the hose and may get smaller. So the more blood the heart pumps, the narrower the arteries, the higher the blood pressure. So if we have plaque in the arteries, let's say we have a half inch diameter, but because of plaque, now maybe we have a three eighth inch diameter or a quarter inch diameter. So now how do we get all that blood through a smaller diameter? We have to raise the pressure. That is what is high blood pressure. But high blood pressure is more likely to occur based on your lifestyle choices. Blood pressure is not something normal. And you are not damned because of it. God's not mad at you. It isn't because of the roll of the dice. It isn't because you are less fortunate than your neighbor. High blood pressure is based on a choice every day. And these are the causes of high blood pressure. If you're overweight, you have a high risk of having high blood pressure. And all those overweight people can lose weight and release or lower the risk of having high blood pressure. Not being physically active. Smoking. And just consuming a lot of refined salt, sodium. I'm not against salt. Salt is good for us. But when you're using white refined salt sold by that little girl with the umbrella, you're getting a lot of sodium, plus all the sodium that manufacturers put in their food to make it taste good so you eat more and you want more, so you buy more. Food manufacturers know how to make foods taste good with sugar and salt and flavoring to make you want more of it, to buy more of it. They sell more of it. It's all, all about money. It's all about economics. How do we make our foods taste that you can't resist it? They're making us unhealthy and fat. So you have to fight back. You have to become defensive. And then you may not be getting enough potassium and to set off the sodium. There's a balance between sodium and potassium. And then here comes our vitamin warrior, vitamin D. Vitamin D does so many good things to our, our health. So the symptoms of high blood pressure. You've probably never heard of the symptoms of high blood pressure. You never have experienced the symptoms of high blood pressure. Why? There are none. There are no symptoms to warn you of the possible pending heart attack or stroke. There's no warning light. There's no red light. There's no meter. Oh, well, there's a blood pressure meter that can measure your high blood pressure, but it's called the silent killer. Most people have no signs at all or symptoms. Even when blood pressure reaches dangerously high levels, dangerously, there's no warning. Unless you watch your blood pressure daily at home, but that's not a way, that's not the way to reduce risks. 
and then go to your doctor to get more blood pressure medication because it's going high. I, I know of people that are actually having, they're on three, four high blood pressure, blood pressure medications, and the doctor has told them how to, how to regulate them, that just stay on this one right now if your blood pressure is normal or near normal, and blood pressure can be very, very dangerously high, 200, 225, over 120. I know people have that range of high blood pressure. How I don't know that it doesn't cause a stroke in so many of these people. But we can do something naturally to lower blood pressure that is more effective than drugs. Now, what do we want to do, first of all? Of course, what we want to do is lose weight. If you're overweight, that is one of the controllable risk factors. We have control over whether we are overweight or not. We don't need to eat all those calories. And we're eating the wrong food. We're eating carbohydrates and sugar, which have no nutritional value. And all of those carbohydrates, whether they're refined, processed, or natural, unprocessed carbohydrates, they all still turn into sugar in the body. And the sugar. Now, we all reduce fats from about 1950 on because they told us fats were bad for the heart. Fats would kill us. They were unhealthy. And at that period of time when we were still eating fat, we were lean, we were healthy, we were at a, at a good weight. And then when they said fats were bad for us, the most likely food to replace the fats were carbohydrates. Food manufacturers, everybody jumped on the bandwagon of carbohydrates. Fats are bad for us. Switch to the bad fats like margarine or solid shortenings, all artificially made, not natural like butter. So everybody became overweight. 50% of Americans are overweight. 50% of the world is overweight. And 50% of America is obese, far more than being overweight. And then not being physical, not doing some form of exercise. Even kids, they're just sitting today. They're not outside playing kick the can and uh, tag and all these other games that kept us active. They're sitting looking at their screens. They're not doing anything to be active. And of course, if people still smoke today, I don't know about that. Smoking kills. Smoking causes cancer. Smoking causes heart disease. What do we do? Why do we smoke? And then not getting enough fruits and vegetables to get more potassium. So we can make changes if we want to. But that is the question. Do we want to? Oh, it's too tough. I don't want to change my diet. I love the foods I eat. Yeah, I know it's killing me, but, you know, I don't want to end up living in a nursing home anyway. Uh, hey, you don't have to. You can be vibrant until the day you die. Because it's just what you eat, and you're eating the wrong stuff if you feel that negative about life. But there are things we can do naturally, all based on scientific evidence. How can we reduce blood pressure without side effects of blood pressure medication? Well, grapeseed extract, French grapeseed extract. Now, this is an extract from the seed. It's a powder. I have so many people tell me, I can't find the grapeseed oil you talked about. I'm not talking about grapeseed oil. I'm talking about grape. In fact, grapeseed oil is not good for you. Don't use grapeseed oil. You want the compounds, the key compounds of grape seeds. They're called omerulic, omerulic, excuse me, 
anthocyanidins. Anthocyanidins. Oligomeric anthocyanidins. That's what's found in grapeseed. It's a key compound of the seed that helps reduce blood pressure. In a study of adults with pre-hypertension, took 300 milligrams of French grapeseed extract or a placebo for six months, for six weeks, excuse me, six weeks. The grapeseed extract reduced the systolic blood pressure. That's the above number, like 120 over 80. The 120 is the systolic, S-Y-S-T-O-L-I-C, systolic blood pressure by an average of 5.6%. That's the higher number. The initial reading, the greater the reductions. The high number, I'm not talking about high blood pressure, I'm talking about the high systolic blood pressure. That's the top number. Is a greater risk factor than high diastolic. The diastolic is the bottom number, like the 80, that's the bottom number. That's called the diastolic. Now, is greater risk factor blood pressure for brain, heart, kidney problems, and even death, especially in middle age and older adults? Now, there were 16 trials on grapeseed extract, French grapeseed extract, in over 800 patients. And researchers took those 16 trials and analyzed them into one trial, which is called a meta-analysis, M-E-T-A, analysis. That means they have taken a combination of 16 trials, gathered all the data of the 16 trials, and brought it down into one analysis to determine if those 16 trials had any value in terms of lowering blood pressure. And it confirmed that grapeseed extract is as effective at reducing blood pressure levels as drugs without side effects or significant adverse effects. That was French grapeseed extract. Olive. Olive oil is phenomenal for the heart. We should do a whole show on olive oil. I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to do that shortly. But the leaves on the tree, not the olives, the leaves have also a potent health benefit. The olive leaf itself, when extracted, standardized, and specialized, lowers blood pressure. This olive leaf extract, not olive leaf oil, not, not olive oil, olive leaf extract, clinically tested to reduce blood pressure. It lowered the systolic pressure by 11 points and the diastolic pressure by five points. These are results equal to prescription blood pressure medication. Olive leaf group also had a significant reduction in inflammatory triglyceride levels. No reduction in the drug group. And then no side effects. No adverse effects from olive leaf. Leaf, not olive oil. A study done with twins. In fact, they were identical twins with borderline high blood pressure. Both twins had borderline high blood pressure. They separated them in a study. 
one of the pair of twins received olive leaf extract while their twin was not treated. The results of this study, the twins receiving olive leaf extract saw a reduction of up to 13 points in systolic blood pressure and 5 points in diastolic blood pressure. While the twin that was not treated, they were in the placebo group, saw no reduction in blood pressure. So what should you, what kind of a combination should you use? Well, I always like to recommend at least 500 milligrams of olive leaf standardized to the key compounds and 100 milligrams of tannin-free French grapeseed extract and take twice a day. It's a great combination for lowering blood pressure as effectively as drugs. But now, with that said, high blood pressure is a very serious condition. Don't take it lightly. So don't throw away your blood pressure medication and take olive leaf extract and grapeseed extract combination. Talk to your doctor first. I don't know who you are. I don't know how bad your blood pressure is. I don't know what your really negative lifestyle choices are. You may be in bad shape. We want to do things very constructively and very positive. So talk to your doctor. And maybe hopefully that your doctor will okay you trying the natural approach of 500 milligrams of olive leaf extract and 100 milligrams of tannin-free French grapeseed extract twice daily. So you're taking about 600 milligrams twice daily. And with that, my friends, we'll pause here for a few moments for the station to identify itself and for some messages coming your way. But, hey, I'm going to be right here. When we come back from the break, it's Terry Naturally with Terry Talks Nutrition. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally with Terry Talks Nutrition. Go to our website, Terry Talks Nutrition. There you can listen to the radio show anywhere around the world. We live stream our locally broadcasted radio program to our website. So you can listen live via your computer anywhere around the world. You just have to change your times if you want to listen to us live. But we archive the shows on the website. You can pull up a show anytime you want, listen to it wherever you are. You can put it on um, your listening devices wherever you are and listen to it at your convenience. And you can also sign up for our newsletter. We have a brand new newsletter that goes out every Friday to your email address. You can sign up on our website. There's a lot of good information on our website, so take advantage of all the information there. Podcast. You can also go on our YouTube channel. It's uh, YouTube slash Terry Talks Attrition. You can listen to all the radio shows and podcasts and other things as well. Uh, we have a lot of good information for you to follow, not only the newsletter, the radio show, and my books. I have eight or nine books that I have just published this year, or I should say the last year. We're already in the new year, and I'm working on my new book that will probably be out in another six months. It's going to be what I believe is the lifestyle that one should live and lead if they want to live to be a healthy, older, living, and happy person. You know, it's all up to us to make the life that we want. We have the choices. We have the freedom. We have the free will to choose whatever we want to be healthy. You can choose the right gas for your car, or you can put in gas that would damage your car. You can add sugar if you want in your gas tank. Don't, don't do that. Don't try that at home. But the fact is, sugar would damage the engine. Sand would damage the engine. If you put something in your gas tank other than gas, 
high premium gas that you might need for your car, you're going to have damage. Your car's not going to right, run correctly. Same with your body. You have to put in the right fuel all the time. Daily. Once in a while, hey, you can have a dessert. You can have a beer. You can have a glass of wine. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, a hermit going into a cave and living. We still have a life to live and things we have to do. But if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, now's the time to make changes. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what shape you're in. I don't care what condition you've got. Uh, in three to six months, by changing your diet, changing your lifestyle choices, you can be a new person. Absolutely. I've seen it over and over and over again. You can be healthy and happy and live the life that you want to live. So now we're back with more information on polyphenols. So what are polyphenols? Well, they are a group of compounds that are found in our food. They're micronutrients in plant life, fruits and vegetables. There are over 8,000 polyphenols that have been identified by researchers. Their best known benefits. They are powerful antioxidants. And we have our diseases that are being treated today by drugs that are probably only the symptoms of a lack of the proper nutrients. So, you know, if we don't get all the vitamins and minerals that we need, we could have pellagra, we could have beriberi, we could be iron deficient. We need nutrients every day. And when we don't get those nutrients, we have signs and symptoms based on the lack of vitamins and minerals and other identified nutrients like polyphenols. And then those symptoms are classified by the FDA as diseases. And the only approved method of treating diseases is with drugs by the drug companies and the doctors to prescribe them. When in actuality, their foods, signs and symptoms, based on the lack of certain nutrients. So the cure is changing the diet to make sure you're getting plenty of the nutrients. And that too, I've seen over and over and over again, people that have been treated with what was known as, well, Type 2 diabetes, arthritis, heart disease, cancer. All these diseases are promoted by unhealthy diet. Being overweight is associated with many diseases, even including a variety of cancers. Overweight, being obese, is the new smoking. Between the two, and we can control both. Smoking and obesity, we can control both. We don't have to be overweight. We don't have to smoke. And between the two, it's, they're causing about 70% of our cancers. You wonder why, why we don't find a a cure for cancer, there is no cure for cancer. There never will be a cure for cancer. Because cancer is a variety of conditions that are caused by our lifestyle choices. So antioxidants prevent oxidative damage. Polyphenols are very powerful anti-inflammatories. All disease, all disease, is based on an inflammatory process. And polyphenols prevent the signs of aging and aging in itself. And also helps correct a wide range of indications, including neurodegenerative diseases, otherwise known as Alzheimer's disease, 
Parkinson's disease. Also supports metabolic disorders, including diabetes, fatty liver. Everybody who is overweight, you're not just overweight in your belly, your arms, but you're also overweight internally. So when you're overweight, your liver is overweight. And many other organs, your heart. So you're putting more of a strain on many organs and glands. And now we have about 30 million people in America that have fatty liver. Well, so what? I'm fat, so should my liver be fat. But fatty liver causes liver disease and death and cirrhosis of the liver. And the liver is responsible for about 600 different metabolic functions in the body. Now we're impaired because all that healthy liver tissue now is infiltrated with fat. Now we have a fatty liver. It used to be caused by alcohol. Alcoholics had cirrhosis of the liver, died from liver failure. But now children and adults have fatty liver, not from alcohol, but from carbohydrates and sugar. You're just not overweight and out of shape. You're overweight and sick. Obesity, cancer prevention. And the quality experts recommend at least 1,000 milligrams of polyphenols daily. There are five very powerful polyphenols. Propolis, French grapeseed extract, apple extract, curcumin, and green tea. From all the research, these are five very powerful polyphenols. So here's some of the research on some of these polyphenol extracts. New research on grape seed extract. Researchers tested the anti-aging effects of grape seed. Now I'm not saying It'll help you live to be 120 or even 95. But it's preventing the aging process. We're getting older before our time. Some people are really old at 40. And some people at 85, they can run rings around the people that are 40. There's really the age whether you're 60, 50, 30, whatever it might be. But there also is the biological age. How old is your body really? Not based on the years you've lived, but on the years you've abused your body. So these researchers gave older mice, like older people, right? They gave older mice extracts from grapeseed. And this resulted in a 60% increase in the remaining lifespan. Overall, they experienced the human equivalent of another decade of life. You want to live another 10 years? I know I've talked to people that have said, no way. I'd rather eat the way I'm eating and die because I don't want to struggle through life in a nursing home or be disabled. Yeah, but that's only because we're not living right. You don't have to live that way. If we live a life of high quality, plenty of proteins, plenty of fats, very low carbohydrates, walk every day, you can live a very long, healthy life without ending up in an interesting home. I know there's people that are in their 90s still living in their own home alone, cooking their own food, and they're still enjoying life. They found that younger mice treated with grapeseed extract had improved physical fitness in mice with cancer. Grapeseed extract shrank the tumors when given a combination 
with chemotherapy. Now, I don't know, I don't want you to tell your doctor what to do. I don't want to tell your doctor what to do. But when people are taking chemotherapy for the treatment of cancer, and the doctor tells them to take no other things with it, don't take grapeseed extract, don't take curcumin, and I hear it all the time. Terry, I'm getting chemotherapy, I'm, I've given chemotherapy for my cancer. The doctor told me I can't take any vitamins and minerals, I can't take any curcumin, I can't take any grapeseed. And the research out there is just the opposite. These natural compounds make grapeseed, excuse me, make the chemotherapy much, much more effective and prevents the toxic effects of the chemotherapy. So it protects the liver. So there are very good animal studies with curcumin, with grapeseed extract, with melatonin, and andrographis in research with these four compounds at MD Anderson Hospital, Baylor University, and New City of Hope Hospital in Los Angeles. They found that these compounds for cancer were able to reduce the tumors better than drugs. They found that andrographis was the most powerful compound for prevention and treatment of cancer. But talk to your doctor. I don't want to oppose your physician's prescriptions, but these are some things you should know. And the research actually was showing that when you gave a patient, well, based on this animal studies, we can't use real patients or human patients, but we are treating human cancer tumors in studies that were done in these various institutions. And they were able to shrink human tumors as much as 90% in just two weeks by adding grapeseed extract, andrographis, or one of the other ones uh, they all have been effective in combination with chemotherapy and reduces the toxicity of the chemo drugs. So leaky gut also a problem, but corrected by polyphenols. 50 older adults with leaky gut syndrome in a double-blind crossover trial of controlled standard diet versus polyphenol-rich diet. Results of various benefits were more powerful in the polyphenol-rich diet versus placebo. When they were on the polyphenol diet, the subjects that were taking the polyphenol diet with the most significant problems with leaky gut experienced a 14% reduction in serum markers of intestinal permeability 5% reduction in the diastolic blood pressure, 11% reduction in glucose levels, although it did not reach statistical significance, but also saw a 19% reduction in inflammatory markers, as well as a reduction in triglyceride levels. All wonderful benefits for good health based on polyphenol, either by food or by supplement. Polyphenols are the next most important nutrient after a daily vitamin and mineral supplement. Well, who needs polyphenols, right? Everybody, everyone should try to approach 1,000 milligrams of polyphenols, especially those who don't eat a variety of fruits and vegetables or maybe on a limited diet. Also, anyone concerned about the aging effect. You know, I know a lot of, I suppose all the women and some men use creams and lotions and potions and everything else to try to stay looking younger. Well, if you want to stay looking younger, polyphenols and all those curcumin, apple, grapeseed extract, propolis, green tea, all have compounds 
that prevent, prevent the aging process. Your skin will look younger. You'll feel better. You'll feel healthier. You'll have less risk of diseases and cancer. And they are cancer prevention. Polyphenols all have an effect on preventing cancer. Or anyone facing nutrient intake challenges, for example, intestinal inflammation or a leaky gut. So the ideal combination, look for a polyphenol blend from green tea, apple, propolis, curcumin, and grapeseed extract, which contains about 250 milligrams of polyphenols and maybe one or two a day. Or more if you want to. If you want to know that you're getting 1,000 milligrams, which is the ideal number of milligrams of polyphenols per day, based on experts' advice, take four a day. Take four servings of this combination. Would be ideal. Now, everybody is afraid of fat, right? Hmm. It's changing. More and more people are eating a more fat diet than before. It's you know, all things have a cycle. Some take longer to make the cycle, some take less time. But the high fat fear, I hope, is over. We, have, we should have a high fat diet as long as the fat is healthy and normal, natural. But here's how it affects the brain. The keto diet which is very high in fat, very high in protein, and extremely low in carbohydrates and sugar. So researchers looked at the effects of this diet on brain function after brain injury. This was an animal model. Half the animals ate a standard diet and the other half of the animals ate a ketogenic diet for two months. On average, now get this, the amount of fat consumed was 90% of the diet. 90%. 9% was protein and less than 1% carbohydrates. This is an ideal diet for humans as well. You might lower the fats down to about 75 and the protein up to maybe 25 or 30. And carbohydrates can be anywhere from 1 to 5 to maybe 7%. But really, really restricting carbohydrates and sugar. So on this diet of high fats, the result versus the animal's that had a standard diet, and those that were on the ketogenic diet, those that had the ketogenic diet, they were able to prevent brain cell death. That means dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. The diet is extremely potent. It's the drug of choice, in my case, in my opinion. The sicker you are, the less carbohydrates in the beginning stages should be consumed. When you get well and you're more healthy, you can add more carbohydrates, I hope, only of fruits and vegetables. And I don't think you should exceed 72 grams of carbohydrates per day. The average American is consuming 500 grams of carbohydrates. So stick to about 72 grams of carbohydrates. Get a carbohydrate um, book uh, that shows you the count of grams of carbohydrates per food. Apples, whatever it might be. Fruit, vegetables, all kinds of food, even some brands of food. So the ketogenic diet prevents brain cell damage and prevention of the inflammation in the brain. And the ketogenic diet 
increase more than 50% restoration of brain function. Diet is the best drug there is. Food is your best medicine. Maybe that's a better way to put it. We've got some more very interesting things coming up for you. Uh, I think this is something we really want to share with you today. So with, our time is running pretty short today. We only have a few minutes left in the second portion of our show. We'll be here to the top of the hour, but that's going by pretty fast. So let's just talk a little bit about benefits of the of daily consumption of curcumin for overweight adults, curcumin is helpful for overweight people. And why? Well, researchers looked at a 15 published study, meta analysis, on curcumin use by overweight adults. They found that curcumin had significant health benefits when taken daily. Most of the studies were two to three months in duration. Very short time. It doesn't take much time to turn around one's health if you're using the right food, the right diet, and the right supplements. Now, reported benefits by using curcumin included significant reductions in total body weight, in the BMI, and the waist and hip circumference. Now, the best way to tell if you're in good shape, good health, is your waist measurement should be half of your height. So, if you're six feet, right? Six feet tall? That's, what, 72 inches? So, your waist should be 36. No more. I'm five foot six. And before I went on the ketogenic diet, my waist was 36. Now, I can't grow to six feet, but I can take off the 36 inches to some degree. And now my waist is 30. And I weigh 160 pounds at five foot six. That is the best way to tell if you're in good health, good shape, physically. And curcumin has also been found to increase the enzyme called leptin, which tells whether or not you are satisfied and you will stop eating. And this hormone is out of balance in overweight individuals. Curcumin lowers that to increase your satisfaction of the food you eat. But the best benefit in all of these studies was only found when curcumin absorption was enhanced. And the study was done with a curcumin called BCM95. Curcumin BCM95. Remember that number because that's critical to get the curcumin that you want that's going to help you lose weight. Very little benefits reported for low-dose curcumin or curcumin-lacking absorption agents. This was very, very critical. And with that, my friends, we're over to with this hour of visiting with you about health and nutrition. So keep in mind, you and I are responsible for our health. That's the bottom line. You can make yourself healthy or you can continue to make yourself unhealthy. Unhealthy. Which direction do you want to go? That's a choice. That's your freedom. You decide. I don't care how old you are, what condition you are struggling with, you can become healthier if you want. Use some of these tools that we recommend. And with that, my friends, say a Prayer, prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you. And God bless America.
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.